In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up a custom key line system for your game. This system can come in handy if you would like your player to be able to select a certain key for different functions in your game, whether that be jumping, shooting, crouching, sprinting, etc. I have a pretty basic UI system set up. I just have a canvas, and then inside that canvas, I have a button, and then it is centered. After you have that, UI setup or whatever UI that you already have set up, you're also going to want to create a empty game object by right clicking and clicking on create empty. I already have one and I named it keybind, so I'm just going to delete this. Now that I have this, I'm going to create a new script. You can do that by right clicking in your assets, coming up to create, and then clicking on C sharp script. I've done that as well and I have named it keybind. Once you have that, you're going to click on your empty game object and you're just going to drag the script onto the game object. Or you can also just type in your script name and it will pop up as well. Now that you have that, just go ahead and double click on the script and it will open up. Um, by default, yours will have a start and an update function. I removed mine, but you can keep yours because those will be necessary in the video. At the top, you will notice that I'm using only three references, the Unity Engine, TM Pro, and then System. I'm going to create a header, and this is just going to organize my actual objects. This is completely optional. You do not need to do this. Um, if you want to just create a serialized field, or you don't even need a serialized field, you can just do the private text mesh pro. UGI button label. Keep in mind, if you do not do serialized field, then you will need to make this public. But if you are doing serialized field, then you can make it private. Next thing we're going to do, make that start function, if you don't have it already, the update function, and then a function for the actual input. This will be a public void, and I'm going to just name it change key. You can name it whatever you want. Just make sure you know what the name is. Um, on this function, we're going to make it so once the user pushes the button, they can enter any key that they want, and then it will be saved. So the next time that they load the game, it will automatically appear for them, and they don't have to reset it. Um, in order to do this, we're going to make sure that the button label that text is equal to awaiting input. When, so whenever the player pushes the button, it will change the text to awaiting input. Now in our update function, we're going to do if the button label that sex is equal to awaiting input, then we're going to do a for each loop to check which button is being pressed. Um, in order to do this, we'll just do for each and we'll be checking the key code. We will just name this key code. You can name that whatever, but I'll just do it key code. And then it will be in enum. And we'll be getting the values since we want to check what the user is actually pressing. And we'll be getting the value of the key code. Once we do that, not in, we will do if input get key, key code, all lowercase, or whatever you named it up here. And we would do button label dot sex is equal to key code to string. And that's basically all it is. So right now, if you were to start the game, whenever the user pushes the button, then the key would automatically be set. Um, however, this does not save it. And in order to save it, all we need to do is access the player prefs. Player prefs is exactly what it sounds like. It basically is the player's preference. Um, so we will set the string, not float, set string. You can name this whatever. I'm just going to name this custom key. And what we will be passing into the string is just the key code and make sure that it is to string. Then in order to actually save this so it loads up on the next play, we will do player prefs dot save. Now that we've saved it, we obviously want to make sure that our users are able to grab that once they start the game again. So we do button label that text is equal to player prefs, get string, custom key, or whatever you named it down here. So you can go ahead and save this and then minimize it and go back to Unity. 
Once you have that set up, you can go up to your button and click on this little plus on your on click event. And you're just going to drag your keybind into here. Click on no function, keybind, or whatever your script name is, and then click on change key. And of course, make sure you click on your keybind and drag in the label that is assigned to your button. So now, if we go ahead and press play, let it load. You'll see I already have something in here because I was testing it out. But if I click on it, you'll see it's awaiting input. And then if I just put W, then close it, and then press play again, you should see that it will load back as W. And then no matter what you put, you can even put Shift, um, Control, all, all that. Then if you stop it, play it again. You'll see left ship. So hopefully this helped you out. If you do have any questions or if any part of this was confusing, just comment down below and I'll get to you when I can. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.